Welcome back to another Modisoft back office video. My name is Jonathan, and today we're going to be going over on how to set up your user permissions for your employees in the back office. This is one of the more important things that you need to do as an owner in the back office to, to set up those user permissions because by default, when you set up your Modisoft account, you are given an admin user which has global access to everything that you're going to do at your store. So you're not going to want to give all that access to just any of your employees unless you truly trust them to not mess up your entire store. So with these user permissions in Modisoft, you will be able to set specific permissions on what your employees can and cannot do based off of what their roles are in your business. So to start off, you're gonna to need to go into your main menu in the top left corner, go into setup, settings and users once you go in there you'll notice this is just a demo store that has example users and what access levels they currently have in this store so in order to create those permissions you would go to the permissions tab and in this section you will see this is where the permissions are created so you'll notice that by default in every Modisoft account, you're going to have a total of eight roles. So you're going to have an admin role and a level two through level eight role that can be used for all of your employees. Now, if for any reason you want to rename any of the roles, for example, this role right here used to be level two, but we've gone in here and we've changed it manager. Click on the role, click the edit pencil, and then you're able to rename it what you want it to be. And if you, for any reason, need to create additional roles aside from the eight that are given to you, so if you do end up renaming all eight roles, but you end up needing more, maybe a couple more roles, you're able to do here, like what we did was we created a role for an area manager. So you're able to come in here, hit add new, and then just name what that role is going to be. And you'll notice that once you do create that role, it does give you an option to delete this role as long as you do not have it associated with any employees so as you notice here in the first users tab you'll notice that someone is set up as an area manager access so if i was to go in here and try to delete that role it will give you a message saying that there is a user that is using the role so you cannot just delete a role if someone has that role assigned to them so if you do want to delete the role, you have to make sure that it is not assigned to any users, and then you will be able to delete that role. So when it comes to assigning permissions to any of your roles, for example, your manager, you'll notice that these columns or tabs that we have here, bank, card C, digital menu, fuel, etc., they are all based off of your main menus here. So you'll see that there's a sales, fuel, lottery, all these tabs are where you can give permissions to your employees. So for example, if you want your manager to have access to all your fuel, lottery, payroll, um, products, maybe they're going to only do inventory or purchasing, etc. You can choose which section they're going to have access to. So for example, in fuel, you want them to do all fuel things then you can actually come here and check mark to give them all access to the fuel all access to lottery you know access to payroll you know you can give them whatever access you need here in products and if that's all you want to give them access to then that is what they have access to so if they try to when they log in, they won't see anything for bank. They will not see anything for cart C or digital menu because you did not give them that access. Now in the products section there, we go even a step further in the permissions where you will notice that there are these expand arrows, which actually gives you sub permissions. So not only will if you want the, your employee to have access to the page, but then it goes into further detail as far as what they can access while they're in that page. So for example, in your promotions, like if all you want your employees to do is just create promotions and that's it, 
you just check mark the promotions and then that's all they can do is create promotions so they will not be able to add a group because maybe you're already adding the groups via your owner account you've already edited your groups you only want to delete the groups whenever you need them to be deleted um, so if you don't want your employees to have that access then you can just give them access to create the promos based off the groups that you have created same thing in the items page so for example if whenever they're adding items and they enter that upc into the item page and you don't want them to be able to change the description you don't want them to be able to assign cost or you don't want them to be able to change the retail of the item then you can actually uncheck anything on this page that you do not want them to have access to so for example unit retail item description you don't want them to change your tax rate for example so that whenever your employee logs into this page in the back office they'll be able to update anything that's here checkmarked but anything that is not checkmarked they cannot touch and you'll notice that it turns from a full permission green checkbox to partial permission yellow checkbox so that you know that this employee does not have access to everything on this page and again that is only for any of the permissions that have this expand arrow so Otherwise, if they do not have the expand arrow, for example, like this item logs permission, then that means you're just giving them access to the page. So if you check or uncheck, it'll just say they have permission or they don't. So that is the main difference between the two. You'll see partial permission, full permission, or no permission. Now, the great thing about these permission roles that you set up is that whenever you do set these up, whether you set them up in the admin store or whether you set them up at the, your main store, is that when you create it at the store level, if you do have a multi-store account, these will automatically be transferred to all the stores in your account. So in some previous versions of our Modisoft back office, there used to be an, a time where you had to copy your permissions from one store to the next. So this became a very tedious task with a lot of our multi-store owners because if they have 20 stores on your account, you would have to copy your permissions that you created in one store and copy them from one store to the next. So that became a long and tedious task. So in this new back office, you do not have to do that. You can just create your permissions and roles in one store and this will be available to all your stores globally. We hope that you found this guide useful in better understanding your Modisoft back office. Please like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you will always be up to date on your Modisoft back office. Thank you and have a wonderful day.